Hi. So uh, I'm back with yet another module of ITL framework. And in this module, we would speak about uh, one of the central uh, core aspects, core piece of the service value system, and that is called service value chain. The service value chain, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the central piece of the entire service value system, which is a complete uh, infrastructure, the service infrastructure framework for the ITL4 module. So service value chain describes uh, about how, what are the various stages that your uh, opportunity has to go through to be able to get converted into uh, uh, something of value. Yeah. So this service value chain, let's understand what are the various activities in this uh, entire module. So the first stage in the service value chain is the planning, uh, as it is mentioned here, uh, the plan. And uh, what it primarily means is uh, that in the beginning, when you design and you craft your service, you would figure out what would be the typical clientele to which it would be catering. What is the kind of uh, you know service infrastructure framework that I would require? And uh, would this service be of demand, right? Would there be enough business available for this uh, specific service? and what would be the approximate funds would, that would be required to be able to create this kind of service. Once you have understood the various aspects of uh, the uh, planning with it broadly with regard to the service, uh, then you would move to the next stage, which is engaging. In the engaging stage, you would figure out that which are the multiple service providers whose efforts should be combined to be able to create this service. For example, in the planning stage, if let's say you decided that you want to provide the IT services to a consumer, to a large, let's say a retail organization, right? In the engaging stage, you would figure it out uh, how these services would be provided. Would it be provided by our internal service provider or do I have to hire other external service providers and which pieces of the service they would provide. For example, IT services might be consisting of, let's say the network services, server services, desktop and laptop services, email services, security services, application services. So all of these six services are going to be provided internally or they have to be uh, you know, subcontracted out to multiple uh, uh, different service providers. And then they have to be put into a certain context and then made available to the end consumer, end client. So we would figure it out if we have to make separate contracts with the other service providers. And our next stage would be to make sure that we design these services appropriately. We arrive at a clear understanding of the service level agreement between the customer and the service provider. And uh, we uh, design various other pieces of this complete service. Once we have completed the design, we would begin the transitioning process. We would actually start creating the physical infrastructure in uh, the transition stage. We would then move to the next stage of obtaining or building, right? So here we are trying to see how the entire uh, infrastructure is going to be positioned is it all an internal creation or are we getting it from outside? And if we are getting it from outside, how each of these pieces are going to be fitted with the, with the, the other one? How the communication flow will happen? How the data flow will happen? And how uh, it would make sense to the customer as an overall piece of the work? In the next stage of delivery and support, uh, we would make sure that our services are ready to be provided to the customer. We would completely craft the service in such a way so that uh, we are ready and uh, we would make sure that we are uh, making these services available as per our commitment to the end consumer. So once we are ready to provide the services to the end customer, we will uh, present our services 
as we have committed in terms of the specific products and services it's like presenting the services in in the form of a specific customized well designed products and services and uh, that is a stage uh, when the services would be availed by the end consumer the end client and the how this is how the value could get delivered to the uh, to the service consumer or the uh, customer so once we are done with the service value chain the next component in the entire service value system is the practices these practices are also called itil practices we would discuss in detail about these practices in the subsequent chapter which is the final module called module 6 these practices are as listed on the slide here these practices are categorized into uh, three parts general management practices service management practices and technical management practices we would confine our understanding to the ones which are marked in the red color the ones which are in the black color for uh, the purpose of the itl foundation framework we would exclude that that is not covered within the uh, core curriculum of itl four foundation so we would concentrate only on those which are marked with red color and uh, we will do that in the next module so further moving on in the service value system uh, the component of continual improvement which is the last one as you would have seen in the uh, diagram and this continual improvement basically allows you to be able to improvise your services on continuous basis as we understand that uh, the uh, primary critical uh, you know the dependence of ensuring that uh, our services are always liked by the end consumer we must uh, draw the valuable feedback and we would keep improving our services continuously so we would create a service improvement program on a monthly basis and we would ensure that the right people with the right skills are deployed on those service improvement programs when we are uh, thinking of what topics we should choose from for uh, uh, service improvement on an ongoing monthly basis we could look at some of these uh, documents in the service management we would look at uh, uh, you know balance score card we would look at some low hanging fruits in some aspect of service management maybe let's say the uh, skills of people to be improved maybe their communication to be improved maybe some of the tools need uh, immediate uh, overhaul and uh, needs to be improved or it could be the uh, the swot analysis strength weakness opportunities and threats of our entire service management that would give rise to many uh, service improvement opportunities we might look at uh, many other aspect of the service management and uh, uh, pick um, one after another for uh, or for on a monthly basis for service improvement when we are choosing various topics for service improvement we would ensure that we do the sufficient impact analysis and we only choose those topics which are quite uh, uh, impactful and which are going to uh, create remarkable results or benefits to uh, overall service infrastructure one of the important aspect of uh, involving uh, uh, people is that uh, service improvement programs will have far more benefits if uh, the uh, various layers in the service management are sufficiently improved including the senior management leadership because if service improvement gets the right to blessings from senior management it would get uh, the right weightage people would really bother and uh, they would provide their uh, sufficient contribution in improving their services and overall that could uh, uh, you know multiply month after month and uh, create a service oriented uh, uh, environment and the infrastructure when we are uh, improving the services we can keep certain model in mind certain framework and uh, this is uh, called a continual improvement model it has got uh, several stages so we would uh, look at what is our vision 
uh, and uh, where we are now on a particular service that we want to improve where do we want to be how do we go there that means what are the typical four or five actions that we would identify then once we take those actions it would be possible to reach to our target level of service uh, management in that particular service and then we would actually implement those actions and then after implementing then we would check did we reach at the target level for example let's say uh, we want our customer satisfaction rating should be either be 4.5 or above out of 5 and uh, where are we now let's say we are at 3.5 and we want to increase this to 4.5 right and uh, where do we want to be would be 4.5 how do we get there let's say we design uh, at least uh, four or five important actions it could be upgrading the skills of the uh, service management staff it could be improving the tools it could be improving the communication flow and so on once we take those actions and then again uh, end of the month we would check have we reached that level of service in the next customer satisfaction survey rating if we have reached then this uh, complete task is completed and if we have not been able to reach then we'll have to repeat this cycle once again this might take two iterations or three iterations depending on uh, different kind of service environments when we are improving the services it is necessary for us to be able to measure these services because unless you are able to measure you wouldn't be able to control and unless you are able to control you would not be able to manage that is how uh, it is that is how the service improvement uh, Uh, programs will create results when we are thinking of metrics we could arrive at three kinds of metrics it could be technology metrics process metrics or service metrics an example of a service metric is a service level agreement service level agreement is uh, let's say if we have to close certain number of tickets uh, in the entire day let's say 95% of the sla has to be met then so much percentage of the tickets have to be closed that would be a service level agreement process metric would be the process effectiveness how do you measure the effectiveness of a process let's say the incidence management how do we measure the effectiveness of incidence management maybe by the number of tickets which have not been uh, uh, closed properly maybe the number of tickets which have not followed the process incidence management process that would be a measure of the effectiveness of the process and uh, uh, how do we measure the technology uh, metrics effectiveness uh, technology metrics could be let's say availability of a server and how do you measure it you would measure by the time the server is not available and that would give rise to uh, technology metrics right so uh, these are super important from uh, a measurement perspective and uh, it is necessary for us to be able to measure the service that we want to improve if we want to bring a service improvement in that particular area so that was it in this particular module we'll uh, meet once again in the next module